All right, so uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, weight painting and uh, <clears throat> just how to do it in a, kind of a cursory fashion. We're not going to do anything too crazy. You can spend a lot of time uh, painting weights. Uh, if we were going to do it uh, you know, thoroughly, I'd have to make sure that these little the hand uh, joints were uh, in the right location. But we're just going to go over some of the basics of it, show you how it works and how you can mirror the weight so you don't have to paint it on one side and paint it on the other side. So <clears throat> here's our character. The first line of attack is to, um, is to um, do hammer skin weights. And you, uh, you generally, you select the verts that are particularly offensive. Uh, and uh, let's see, choose these guys. You can't choose all of the weights. Uh, I've tried it just to see what happens, and uh, Maya says uh, it ain't going to play that game. So what you do is you go to skin, and you go to hammer skin weights. And what it'll do is it'll pull those back in. It'll say, I was a little bit mistaken in that choice. So, uh, But we still can see, though, that there is an issue with the, with the weights under that arm. And it's a lot better. It's almost... You know, it, it'll be acceptable uh, in Maya just to have it run around. But like I said, this is just for example. So uh, in order to paint skin weights, uh, you click on the mesh, you go to skin, you go to paint skin weights uh, option box. <clears throat> and to read it, uh, also to reiterate, skin weights are the distribution of influence from uh, the joints in the rig. And they're calculated via the... Uh, bind skin tool uh, and the method that was used to bind the skin, which was geodesic voxel. So, um, with the um, now you'll you'll want to click on use color ramp. If you don't, then it will be um, it'll just be a grayscale. I I like the geodesic. I mean, I like the um, the color ramp because it gives you a little bit more understanding of uh, the influence. So. The brighter colors uh, or the, the warmer colors uh, show more influence. White means complete influence, and uh, black is no influence. Blue, the cool, is very little influence, and as it goes up, more influence. And we can go through the, um, the rig over here. You can see where all the influence uh, exists. So in things like this, like the... Um, there's no reason to have the head influenced um, from the spine. And this is where you could spend a lot of time and waste a lot of time just painting and painting and painting. Um, but you have to consider also like uh, how much time you really want to put into it. Um, so this is our offending um, joint. It's the left upper arm. And we can see that um, this over here is a little bit more influenced than we would like it to be. Now, you'll also notice that I have a paintbrush as the icon and a, a circle around it. To change that, you hold down B, as in boy, uh, and, you, um, and then you can increase the size or decrease the size. So like I said, it's all vert-based, so you're going to be painting verts. You're not going to be painting faces or anything. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can either do additive um, or subtractive. Um, now the, the, sometimes the issue, if you subtract it, like, uh, if, if I say, if I want to cool this area off, it's taking, uh, value away from that. But, and here's the problem is that Maya won't always, uh, behave in an intelligent way and take the value from that and put it in a location that it, it would be where it should go. So a lot of times you have to do um, the positive uh, adding. But uh, in this case, uh, I would suggest using negative and seeing where that, uh, where it puts that influence. So here are our controls, our main controls. We have replace, add, and smooth. And this is all quite smooth. If it looked a little bit jagged, then you could click smooth. Uh, flood means it'll flood the whole thing with whatever uh, setting you have over here. If it all looks very jagged, you could put opacity up to one, value up to one, and flood it 
uh, assuming that you have smooth clicked and it will uh, smooth out the whole thing, kind of like adding a blur on an image. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to put the opacity down pretty low, put the value down to zero, and we're going to see what it's like to remove uh, some of this. You can see it got a little bit cooler there. Things are getting a little bit cooler. Hmm. Maybe not quite so cool. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to bring these guys down. And um, notice also that I have the arm up. And the reason that I have the arm up is because I want to see it in uh, the offending uh, or the, the position that causes the most uh, problems. And uh, another reason for that is because it's under the arm, uh, if we had the arm down, it would be a real pain to just try to fly up there under his arm and, uh, and try to reduce the weights. So that's looking a little bit better. I also put the the opacity down to um, that low value because I wanted to make sure that we didn't uh, make too much of a change too quickly. It's a little life lesson. Don't enact too much change too quickly. Because usually there are some, uh, there's some backlash to it. Okay, so that's looking better. So let's try that out and see what happens when we move it. So I moved out of there, clicking on the bone, and I'm moving it up and down much, 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 much better. Still, I don't like what's going on on the top of the shoulder, but like I said, this is just a cursory look at, at how that works. Um, let's go back to our bind pose and go skin. Go to bind pose, and let's look at some of the other um, some of the other joints. So we can see that there's an issue here uh, where the top of the leg moves down a little bit. We would want the leg to uh, to stay um, have its uh, its regular thickness. That's not very realistic, um, but I'm not going to fool around with that just yet. There's another issue there too. And so if you have a character that you really want to look good and uh, or in a professional situation where you want the whole thing to be painted properly, definitely going to want to uh, adjust it. Now there's also something else to consider and that's what exactly uh, you should prepare for. For instance, like if we're moving him around uh, you're probably going to want to do some uh, effect the head a little bit because you're not going to want him to be kind of a rubber face. But some things you should not really expect um, out of it. Like if we move the head down, that's the way we would we would move it. Um, but this over here, <laughs> it's not going to ever do that. So you don't have to worry about that. I don't know. That looks like some kind of surrealist painting. Uh, and equally, it can look quite hilarious if you do something like this. <laughs> oh, the joys of, uh, of, uh, of 3D modeling. Tell me about the stars, Dad. Anyways, okay, there we go. It's back. Okay, so I, I like that arm uh, weight. And if I look at the left, uh, the other side, we still have that problem. So what we want to do is we want to mirror those uh, those weights that we did over here and not uh, paint over there. Although we could have done that while I was yammering on about nothing. So we will choose again the mesh and we'll go to skin and we'll go to mirror skin weights in the option box. And just like we mirrored the, uh, the joints, uh, it's going to be YZ or whatever value you had. So positive x to negative x. This is positive x. Over here is negative x. 
And uh, what did we use? I think we used closest point on surface. Let's try that. That should do it. So I'll click on these guys, I'll move it up. Excellent. So that is good enough uh, for our example. And with that, we're going to select this one. I'm going to select that. That's Hildegard in the background, by the way. Export selection. And where do we have all our stuff here? OK. Uh, character with weights test. That is our. Um, so we're exporting it as a FBX like we had done before. Export that guy out. All right, and I'm going to save this. Okay, now let's go into the Unreal Engine. And while that's loading up, uh, I'll tell a joke. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Fish. <sighs> Taking it good, sweet time. OK, a new character test. Open that. Okay, so we're back in here, uh, and again, we're going to go into Mannequin, Character, and Mesh. We're going to import our new guy, and that was weight. What do we call him? Character with weights test. Open. And that's set. I use TO as ref pose. Import. We'll get the little warning. It's going to fix it. Close that. And click on the robot guy. And then over here, SK Mannequin, we're going to choose character with, with weights test. That's our new guy. All right. And then here's our new guy over there. So let's check it out, see what happens. So we can still see when he jumps that there's some issues with waiting. Uh, between his legs, um, but overall, we know that under the arms is a lot better. So there you are. There is the basics of taking our character that we've modeled and made a rig for uh, and waited, and he's in the game. If I had a nice texture, it would look even better, and also we would want to smooth him out, and um, and then um, and we'd be able and that would look a lot better. Notice also that he's hovering over the ground. That's probably uh, due to the positioning of the of the bones. So that would be something that we'd have to look into. And uh, all right, so that's that. And we'll move on to a new video um, very soon. Thanks for watching.